I would just write them Battery. on my desk and in my <laughs> Now, obviously, you want more than just redirects. Mm -hmm. But it's not a bad idea to cache writes locally so that you can always, if something goes haywire, serve up what I wrote. And that's what people do in practice. Okay. Let's look at another scenario that could be bad. How much time do I have? We have like a minute. Right. Let's imagine that. Let's see. This client does is this, yeah, no, this is fine. So client one writes X and one. So X and one. And Bob the beholder comes along and reads X. X is one. Reads X. X is zero. Because of consistency. That's not good. Right, for similar reasons to why the other thing wasn't good. Unfortunately, read your rights isn't going to get you there. Right? This is a different session guarantee. This is an anomaly to some other guarantee that we think we would like to have in a world that is sane. An anomaly that's ruled out by causal consistency but doesn't necessarily need the full power of causal consistency to rule out. An anomaly that we might call monotonic, monotonic reads. In the sense that if I read a variable over and over again, every time I read it, I get at least as recent a value as the last time that I read it. I don't see the values go back in time. Right? Why might I care about that? Well, I might know that my application is actually implementing a distributed count. And counters don't go down. They only get incremented. So if I saw a value of the counter be 1 and then I saw it be 0, I would be like, what the? <laughs> right? That's no good. So I might want monotonic reads. Okay.
then you can have a very small app that enjoyed those session guarantees and did everything it was supposed to. Um, you're going to read all about some of these session guarantees and public consistency in the Doug Terry paper that you're reading for Wednesday. I think you'll enjoy it. I haven't actually seen the talk, but Doug's a great speaker, so I recommend watching the talk alongside the, alongside the paper. But read the paper also. It's good. What I think is really neat about Doug's paper is that he does a good job of convincing me of something that I don't think is true. It's like one of those things where you're, you're like, I'm, while I'm reading it, I'm like, I'm right there with Doug. Well, he worked for Microsoft. <laughs> well, he worked for Microsoft. Oh, so they should turn him when they closed their Silicon Valley research lab. Oh. So yeah, if you go into research, think twice about working for Microsoft. Sometimes they just shut down labs and fire all of the researchers. But, um, but what was my point about Doug? Oh, so what's interesting is that he gives this really compelling, believable case, not just that the consistency is interesting and useful, but that a practical application might use a rich mix of different consistency levels for the different processes in the application and nevertheless have them all work together harmoniously. I tend to think that that's, he does it in a very cute way in his paper, but I don't think it's very realistic because I think that the average programmer doesn't have a good sense of, in the, given the zoo of consistency models, which is exactly the right one that gets me the properties I want but doesn't overpay, that's hard enough. But then imagine ask, also asking them to consider all of the different choices that all the other programmers writing code that interoperates with their code might have made and believe that somehow that it all works together and will be consistent without the help of a verifier. Right? That seems, I don't even understand how you would do that, but he gives a great example of how like the scorekeeper requires a different notion of consistency than the reporter, than the umpire, and so on and so forth. So I think you'll enjoy the paper a lot. All right, I'll see some of you uh, on Wednesday. <laughs>